Hi, we have already created a video of doing masters or residency in the USA after your BDS in India. But if you're planning to do masters in oral and maxillofacial surgery after BDS, then you cannot directly get into it. For that, first you need to either do your DMD or your DDS program, and then you can get into it. To explain more about the entire process, we have with us today Dr. Khuram Khan. Dr. Khan is a board certified oral and maxillofacial surgeon and a pediatric cleft and craniofacial surgeon as well. He is currently running his private practice in Cincinnati, USA, which focuses on surgical treatment of patients with facial differences. After completing his BDS from Karachi in Pakistan, he moved to USA, where he did his DMD from the Boston University's Goldman School of Dental Medicine. He then went on to do his oral and maxillofacial surgery internship in Louisiana State University, followed by his residency in oral and maxillofacial surgery in Indiana University. He then did his pediatric cleft and craniofacial fellowship from Charleston Area Medical Center. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Hi, Dr. Kuram Khan, sir. It is amazing to have you with us. Uh, my first question to you is, if someone wants to take the route you have taken after DDS and DMD, how does one become an oral and maxillofacial surgeon in the US? Yeah, so um, before I give you the complete answer, uh, you said it right, DDS or DMD, you have to do that. It's very, very important that everyone understands. A lot of people will come here um, and say, hey, there's a shortcut. There's a better way to do this. I can skip my DDS and DMD, my US DDS and DMD. Do not do that. These are all gimmicks. The reality is, if you want to practice in this country, you have to do DDS and DMD. So that is my public service announcement for today. Uh, please don't take any short, there are no shortcuts in life. It's just hard work. So make sure you do that. As far as maxillofacial surgery is concerned, we all know it's a residency. There's two different types of residencies. There's a, a single degree, which is you don't get your MD, you don't go to medical school. And there's a dual degree, um, which is you go to medical school. So it's a four year single degree, six year dual degree program. It doesn't make a difference where you go and what, which program you go to, it really makes zero difference. Um, especially now that um, maxillofacial surgeons, whether single degree or dual degree, and I will touch more on that a little bit later, are now getting complete recognition in the, fellow, um, in the American College of Surgeons. So um, what you will basically do is, and this all starts in DDS and DMD, not... Um, not after. It starts during that time. If this is what you want to do, um, then you have to be in the top 10% of your class. There's no question okay. about that. Um, during your time when you're doing your DDS or DMD, um, you have to make sure that you do a lot of externships. Um, these are one week or two week externships that you do in different residency programs. Um, the whole point about these is that when you're interviewing, um, and of course we're gonna go into depth with the interviews uh, part of it, but when you're interviewing, they want to know how much knowledge and how much um, you know, experience and exposure you have to maxillofacial surgery. Maxillofacial surgery is a very tough residency. And when I say it's a tough residency, I am not, making this up, it is a very tough residency. A lot of people leave in their first three months. They don't, they cannot afford that you quit in the first three months. And that is why they want to know that you actually have exposure and you know what you're talking about because there are many applicants who have no idea what they're getting themselves into. They just realize that, oh, I wanna be a surgeon, I'm gonna apply. And they get interviews, they're not, from foreign countries. These are um, students who are part of the United States of America and they've, they've 
been born here, raised here, studied here, for them to get interviews is very easy. And so they'll get an interview, but they don't know what they're getting themselves into. So you can definitely show that you have an edge if you can prove to them that you know what you're talking about, you know what this entails, and it doesn't scare you. That's the most important thing. Um, so like I said, you've got to be in the top 10% of your class, um, externships, and anything that will set you apart, whether that's um, research in the maxillofacial surgery department, um, in your uh, school where you're doing your DDS or DMD. Um, and then of course, uh, at, at this point in time, you are taking a test. It's a very a USMLE based test and you've got to score high on that too. Understood. So you were telling sir about the programs being four years and six years. What are the difference between these programs and how do I know which one to get into? Before you listen to the answer to that question, do not forget to hit the like button below because the more likes and subscribers we have, it becomes easier for us to create such content which would be helpful to you. There's no difference at all when it comes to surgical experience and expertise. Zero. Zero. Um, the only difference is that you get an MD or you don't. Now, this is really important because they say beggars can't be choosers. And that's what I was. Um, coming from Pakistan, um, not having an undergrad from the US, I had a Pakistan dental degree and then I had a dental degree over here um, from Boston University. But the MD programs didn't want to take me because I didn't have an undergrad. Doesn't make sense. I don't know. I had two dental degrees and that wasn't enough for them. But that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> people told me that with an MD, you have a lot of more doors open. Um, you can get into academic institutions easily. Um, acad um, or you can get into fellowships easily. I'm a single degree maxillofacial surgeon. I have never had any problems in getting academic appointments. Um, before I went into private practice, I was looking into academic positions. I got into two academic positions. All of the ones that I applied to, I got into all of them as the director of the program. So that's a big deal. And I was a single degree guy. The other thing is they said fellowship is going to be a problem. Every fellowship that I applied to, I'm a pediatric cleft and craniofacial surgeon too. So every fellowship that I applied to, I was their first choice. So it's, a, it's case in point that you don't need an MD to succeed and you don't need an MD to um, set yourself apart. Lastly, and this is something that I'm very proud of because I've worked my entire life for this, where um, the American College of Surgeons, um, just like you have an FRCS um, in England, um, uh, is, is the, the biggest body of uh, um, surgeons in them in America. I'm now going to be inducted in the FA, for a FACS as a fellow. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. So it's in October in Boston. I'm taking my entire family, so it's going to be exciting. But um, yeah, and I'm a single degree maxillofacial surgeon. So I don't want anybody to listen to this and have any sort of hang-ups. I don't have an MD or things like that. It's, it's not necessary for what you want to do. Nothing can really stop you if you want to get there. Got it, sir. Uh, but sir, what you're telling is you have successfully done it. But I don't want our viewers to end up feeling that it is a very easy cakewalk kind of a process. Because the residency process, what you have gone through, I'm aware of it, the grills you have gone, the sleepless nights. Could you make mm -hmm. our audience aware of the difficulties also with the oral residency program and they should not just see the one side sweet affair. Yeah. Um, there's, I'm going to talk about money here and there's better ways to make money. Um, there's better ways to live your life. Um, when you do any sort of surgical discipline, whether it's general surgery, neurosurgery, maxillofacial surgery, plastics, ENT, whatever, it doesn't make a difference. You give up a lot you will give up at least 40 years of your life, if not 35, 40 for sure. 
So um, you will give up a lot of your life and it is absolutely grueling. Um, maxillofacial surgeons are medical doctors, dentists, anesthesiologists. We wear a lot of hats. So we are being pulled by the medical community in the hospital setting. We are um, uh, being pulled by the dental community at the dental school and things like that. So it is, it's a lot of sleepless nights. Um, I would tell you for five years, um, I, um, I probably worked at least Mm, at least 110 hours a week. Wow. And um, this was five years of my life where um, my my family, my, my wife at that time, uh, she was, I didn't have kids at that time. How could I have kids? I didn't have time. And um, she didn't see me, you know? So um, it is very tough. And that's, again, coming back to the interview, they want to know that, do you understand how tough this is going to be? And you will only know that by doing externships and you will realize that you're awake all night and you're because you are most maxillofacial surgery programs are the only trauma people there. So any facial trauma that comes, you're it. That's it. You're the one who's taking care of it. So, um, yeah, it is. It's definitely. Um, unless I've got a six year old and a two year old, unless they said that this is on, the only thing I want to do in this world. I don't want to do anything else. I have so much love for it because that was me. That was me. I have so much love for it that I would not want to do any. I don't care how much I have to give up. I will give up everything to do this. And again, that was me. That's the only time I would say, okay, do it. Otherwise, um, there's better ways to make money and better ways to make a living. Understood, sir. So you were telling about standing out in the interview when it comes to uh, having your application pop out, like doing a lot of externship, proving to them that you are in it for the long haul. What are the other things you can do to stand out in the interview? Yeah, like I said, um, research uh, is something that you can do. Um, and then uh, there's your scores. The scores are the most important thing, because think about it this way. You have three spots at a residency. I'm giving you my exa the example of my residency. You have three spots every year. You have 300 candidates, right? So now we have to get rid of 270 applications. And we have to find 30 applicants. So 10 for each spot. 10 for each spot. So how do you do that? It's going to be scores. It's going to be your scores. So right off the gate, 270 applications go into the bin because they're like, they haven't scored high enough. Because at that time, you're looking at a piece of paper and you're just looking at different metrics. Um, and those, and that's the, the biggest thing is the score. So um, after that comes everything else. So um, the score is gonna be the most important to get your foot in the door for um, the interview. Understood. So it's basically to get into the interview, you need a good score. And after that, to prove them well, you need to have research papers, if possible, and a lot of externship programs. Is there anything other than this they should keep an eye out for? Oh, yes, absolutely. So it's about how you interview. That is the key thing. It doesn't matter how many externships you have. It doesn't matter how many. Now I'm going to tell you something that I is opposing what I said before. OK, but this is really critical. And um, I've been fortunate enough to coach a lot of people with this, but this is very critical. It's how you interview, because now let's take that example. 270 applications in the bin. Now they have 30 applicants, 30 applicants for three positions. Everybody is equal now. Everybody. You have to keep that in your mind that everybody is equal. They may have a higher score than you. They have more externships than you. They have more research than you. But you're all equal because that day, you're all interviewing. So they treat you as equal. How are you going to stand out? You need to know how to talk. You need to know how to sell yourself. Because you could be less, 
but you can be more just because of how you sell yourself. Unfortunately, that's what it comes down to is how you sell yourself. Because when I was applying and there were 30 applicants and I was sitting in the hot seat, then what was happening was I was the only brown person there. Why would they take me? I wasn't a citizen at that time. I was a green card holder at that time. So that makes a big difference too. So I had to prove to them that I am better than all of them. With all due respect, sir, I'm a better candidate than everybody else there. I know they've worked hard. These were my words. I know they've worked hard. And they've worked really hard and they deserve to be here. But if you are looking for a candidate, the only one you you should be thinking about is me, the person sitting in front of you. If you don't take me this year, you will see my face again next year. And you'll see my face the year after that. And you will continue to see my face here till the time you don't take me. It's that simple. You tell me to stand on my head, I will stand on my head. You tell me to do whatever you tell me to do, I will do it. That's what I said. And I said that, you know, that's the difference between me and somebody there. I don't take this for granted. I've, I have, you know, my entire life has been dedicated to this day. So that's it. It's very simple for me. You're not, you're going to pick a winner when you take me. You're not going to have somebody who will flake on you and leave in three months and get scared. I know what this discipline is about. So it's basically showing your confidence, not being overconfident, but showing your dedication as well, that you are there and willing to gruel it out. That is basically yeah. what you have to portray in the interview. Be humble. Humble, that's all they, they don't want to see <clears throat> a smart ass. They don't want to see somebody who's full of themselves. And that's what the first thing I said, I, everybody deserves to be here. But why should you pick me? And that is because I am dedicated. I understood. Got that. Uh, so since you had gone from Pakistan, you had uh, to go through the DDS protocol and everything else. How about the finances? Since you were not a citizen at that point of time, did you get funded? Were there scholarships? How does this work? It was it was hard, um, but I got lucky. So what happened was um, I had a student visa and um, my student visa came in late one day late so i had to forego my seat for dds oh. and I had to wait another year during that year i got my green card and that's how um i got um um the my fafsa loans which are basically uh government loans so okay. but before that i had to show i had to ask somebody to fund me and show money and things like that, it was very stressful. I don't think I would have been able to do it. So those people who have somebody to sponsor them and fund them, that is great. I didn't, um, I, you know, it was, it was kind of rough. It was a dicey situation, but everything happens for a reason, um, you know, and um, I had to waste a year or I lost a year, didn't waste it, I lost a year. But during that time I had my green card. So if you have your green card, then you can apply for student loans. Got it. Uh, so Got is there any scholarship programs as such? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. You're going to have to be something very exceptional to do that. So are these loans easily repayable? Because they come in lots of dollars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you, the chances are that depending if you have a family and things like that, you're probably not going to be paying your DDS loans during a residency. Residency, you don't get paid much. You get paid enough to pay rent and utilities and, and uh, food for your family. So um, yes, it's you can. You absolutely can. Once you get out, you absolutely can. If you become an academic, then you have to be an academic for 10 years and all your student loans are written off. If you um, if you go into private practice, you should absolutely be able to pay them off. Understood. I haven't paid them off yet um, because um, 
you know, I've been in private practice for four years now, and um, but I've been concentrating on uh, expanding the business. So I have not paid them off. But if I could, if I really wanted to, and I wasn't expanding my business, I absolutely would have been able to pay them off. Understood. Now that you have gone through the entire grill, okay, you have coached a lot of people do it. What is your suggestion to someone who is watching this video and thinking, I need to be the next Kuram Khan. I want to be there. I want to have this dedication. What would you be advised to them? Um, think about it hard. Um, whether you're a girl or a boy, it doesn't matter. Um, if Especially if you are married, this is really important. Um, talk to your family. Uh, you cannot do this alone. I did not do this alone. I had the prayers and the support of many, many people, um, especially uh, my father passed away when I was young, but um, my my mother and my wife, the, I couldn't have done it without them. There's no question about it. Um, it will break you um, in days and then that's when you will need your family because you will need somebody to tell you that it's going to be okay and you will get through this and you will survive. So that's the first thing. Be honest with yourself, how much you can handle um, and be honest with your family um, because these are two important key aspects because if you're not honest with yourself, then you can, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's a rough, it's a rough process. And a lot of people <clears throat> that I've met um, have come here and said, hey, you know, I want to do maxillofacial surgery, but they realize that this is not the right path for them. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, maybe I'm not cut out for this. But if you have that fire, um, then let it burn. Understood. So it is basically during their DDS, they can do a few ex externships and realize whether this is fit for them. Because anyways, if they're taking the route, they'll have to get into the DDS or the DMD program. And during that right. time, they should be completely sure whether they are willing to take that leap or not. Yeah, yeah. And and talk to people. Talk to other oral surgeons, um, specifically those who are have taken the same route, the international DDS program, then residency. I did not get into residency the first time. Um, the first time I got rejected and and that was because I didn't interview the way I should have. Um, and I nobody taught me how to interview. I was just desperate. So I was like, I'm going to say whatever I have to say to get in. And that's what it was. It was just desperation because I didn't want to do anything else. I couldn't ever fathom doing anything else. I love dentistry. I love medicine. But that wasn't for me. It was it was surgery and it was maxillofacial surgery. So uh, talk to people who've been through it, and they can and talk to people who you think will give you the right, honest opinion. Because a lot of people don't give the honest opinion, and they sugarcoat things or they just don't want to help. It's I hard see. to find people. Who so you need to be accustomed to the reality, know what is going on, and then take the dive. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you for your time. And I know you have a busy schedule. Still, you're taking time out and come and help us out. Thanks a lot. Oh, absolutely. It was a pleasure. You guys have an amazing uh, organization and everything that you do for everybody else. This is You're doing a lot of great work for people. So I'm just happy to be a very small part of that. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If you've seen this video, do not forget to check out our other two videos which would surely be beneficial to you.